Now we still have a problem, which is we still don't know this angle over here. Well, it turns out it's going to be a lot easier to deal with this if we give this angle a name. Uh, the name that we usually use is theta. So let's call this angle theta. Now we are going to have to use trig functions. So let's decide which is the correct trig function to use. Well, now, theoretically, we could figure out this angle using this 5.8 number that we just figured out. We could use the hypotenuse in the 5.8 number. That would work. But that's not what people usually do in physics. As I've already mentioned a few times, in this type of problem in physics, people usually try to figure out information using just the original information they were given, not the new information they figured out. So what people would usually do here is try to figure out theta just using these two numbers that we were given at the start. That again is why we put these asterisks in to remind ourselves that we were given these two numbers at the start. Uh, okay, so um, we're going to try to figure out theta using these two numbers we were given at the start. Well, these two numbers are the opposite and the adjacent sides. So which trig function do we need? That should be pretty plain at this point. We know we want to work with the opposite and the adjacent sides. Well, that's the tangent. Only the tangent involves both the opposite and the adjacent sides. Let's take the tangent of theta. Toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. I don't think we've done many problems so far that involved the tangent. Um, but now, uh, in this section of the video, almost every problem is going to involve the tangent. Uh, so, uh, Toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. What should I plug in for theta? Well, I don't know what theta is. By the way, you can see why we really had to give this angle a name. If we hadn't given this angle a name, theta, I wouldn't know what I was taking the tangent of. So sometimes you just have to invent a variable just to make it easier to work through your algebra. Remember that you would never just write tangent equals. That's terrible. You have to say tangent of some angle equals. So don't write this. Instead, make up a symbol if you have to so that you can be taking the tangent of a particular angle. What should we plug in for the opposite side? Well, we know that this side has a length of 3. And what should we plug in for the adjacent side? That had a length of 5. OK, so the tangent of theta is uh, 3 fifths. Uh, you can figure out what 3 fifths is on your calculator. It's 0. 0.6. So the tangent of theta is 0. 0.6. All right, now what, what do we have left to do? Well, remember, we're trying to figure out what theta is. That means we're trying to solve this equation for theta. We're trying, as they say, to solve this equation for theta. That means we're trying to get theta by itself in the equation. We're trying to get theta by itself. Well, it's not by itself yet because it's got this pesky tangent function attached to it. In order to get the theta by itself, we're going to have to get rid of the tangent function. Well, how do you get variables by themselves? I hope at this point it's very clear to you that you do the opposite. The way to get something by itself is to do the opposite. Uh, for example, the way to get rid of a square was to do the opposite and take the square root. Well, what's the opposite of a tangent? Well, um, I wouldn't expect you maybe to know what the opposite of a tangent is if you're just learning about tangent for the first time uh, in these videos. Um, the, tan uh, the opposite of tangent is simply something that's called inverse tangent. The opposite of the tangent function is just something that's called the inverse tangent. Sometimes it's called the arc tangent. So here we have two ways to write um, what the opposite of the tangent function is. The opposite of the tangent function is sometimes written like this. This is pronounced inverse tangent. Or sometimes it's written like this, and this is pronounced arc tangent. So we have to take the inverse tangent of both sides. What happens when you take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side? Well, since we're doing the opposite of the tangent, the tangent term drops out, and that gets the theta by itself. If you take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, uh, that annihilates the tangent function, and we're left with theta by itself. Uh, but remember the golden rule of algebra. Any any if we're doing something to the left-hand side, we have to do it to the right-hand side. Since we took the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, we also have to take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side. When we took the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, that just removed the tangent function. But when we take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, we actually have to write down that we're taking the inverse tangent. Uh, this is one way to write this. Another way to write it is like this. These two mean the same thing. These are both uh, 
what are called the inverse tangent or the arc tangent. The inverse tangent and the arc tangent are the same thing. By the way, this little negative one here is not an exponent. This does not mean to the negative one power. Uh, it's maybe kind of a bad notation because it looks like an exponent, but it's not. This does not mean that we're raising this to the negative one power. This is just a conventional symbol for inverse tangent. So you should just read this as the inverse tangent of six. And this would be pronounced as the arc tangent of six. The key thing is that these two functions are the same, and they're both the opposite of the tangent. So if you have to detach a tangent function from a variable, the way to do the opposite is to take the inverse tangent. One way to read this equation is you could say the tangent of theta is 0.6. We would read this equation by saying the tangent of theta is 0.6. How could you read or interpret this equation? Well, the interpretation is theta is the angle whose tangent is 6. This means theta is the angle whose tangent is 6. And this means the same thing. Theta is the angle whose tangent is 6. We already knew that. You can see that theta is the angle whose tangent is, um, oh, have I been saying 6? It uh, looks like I made a mistake. It looks like I forgot this point over here, didn't I? I was sloppy. Remember that actually uh, 3 fifths is 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So this is the inverse tangent of 0.6 and the arc tangent of 0.6. Uh, sorry if I was confusing you about that. Uh, okay, so um, I should have uh, been using 0.6 all along over here because 3 fifths is 0 0.6. Anyway, then what I meant to say is that the tangent of theta is 0 0.6. You could pronounce this the tangent of theta is 0 0.6. Uh, and then you could read this as saying theta is the angle whose tangent is 0 0.6. Theta is the angle whose tangent is 0.6. We already knew that from here. We can see that theta is the angle whose tangent is 0.6. These two mean the same thing. All right, now how are you going to find the inverse tangent? Well, you're going to need your calculator for that. Um, so you're going to have to find the inverse tangent function um, on your calculator. On most calculators, um, uh, most scientific calculators, the inverse tangent function is right above the tangent button. So on most scientific calculators, uh, there's a button that says tangent. And then above that button, it says inverse tangent. It might say arc tangent or tangent negative one. Uh, how do we get this function? Well, this is what we call a second function. So you'd have to hit the second key. All right, so on most calculators, uh, this is how you would get the inverse tangent. So um, we would hit the second key. Then we would hit the tangent key, which now would give us the inverse tangent, and then we would type in 0.6. You have to type the number usually after you've um, said the inverse tangent. That's the way most calculators work. On most calculators, first you have to get the inverse tangent function, and then you can type the number 0.6, and now you can just hit enter or equals and get the answer. Uh, so again, you hit the second key, then you hit the tangent key. Since you hit second first, that would give you the inverse tangent function, which is probably above the tangent key. And then you would type in the number you're taking the inverse tangent of, 0.6. Anyway, this is exactly how you would do this on a TI-83 or TI-84 calculator. If you have a TI-83 or 84 calculator, this is the exact way to enter the inverse tangent. I think most other scientific calculators are similar. Uh, but it's possible that your scientific calculator is a little bit different. Um, and if so, you'll just have to work out how to get the inverse tangent. Uh, but uh, if you have any trouble with that, you should certainly ask your instructor, because you're definitely going to need to find inverse tangents uh, many times as the course proceeds. So make sure to get some help if you need to from your instructor if you don't know how to get the inverse tangent on your calculator. All right, so on the calculator, the uh, inverse tangent uh, at 0.6 is 31 degrees. Rounding off. Inverse tangent equals approximately 31 degrees. Remember, we're not worrying about significant figures here. So this little angle is 31 degrees. OK, so we've gone over um, some new information here that we didn't need on the previous types of problems. Uh, so remember that we've covered two different types of problems. Earlier, we covered problems where we were given a side and an angle. And now we're covering problems where we're given two sides. And you can see that when you're given two sides, you attack the problem quite a bit differently. Uh, when you're given two sides, well, you figure out the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. 
hypotenuse squared equals one leg squared plus the other leg squared. And you figure out the angle by using the inverse trig function. Uh, if this is the very first time you've ever heard of an inverse trig function, this might be um, a little bit um, off-putting or formidable, but you're going to have to practice this so, um, over and over until it becomes very commonsensical and easy, because this is a skill that you're going to expect it to find easy, uh, something that you expect it to have mastered very soon as your physics course proceeds. Um, so make sure you see how we got this right. All right, so as usual, I would recommend don't move on to the next example until this problem is easy for you. Keep redoing this problem over and over until it's easy for you, and then go on to the next problem. If these problems are giving you difficulty, remember I recommend using the same notation that I'm using on the board. The notation I'm modeling on the board is the exact notation I would recommend using for these types of problems. Uh, for example, use asterisks to mark the information that you've been given and the angle um, that you're focusing on. Uh, write the general formulas first and then plug in if you're having any trouble uh, with these types of problems.